Hey guys, remind me not to do this again. Saving a buck is just covering me in grease. I'm getting pissed off. This video is brought to you by Sportland. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Well, we had an exhaust fan that failed. The motor failed on it, this one right here. It failed about a week and a half ago, and it's a mainline exhaust fan. It actually used to go there. They actually had a prep exhaust fan on the opposite side that wasn't as critical. So what we did temporarily was we made sure it was somewhat within spec, and we swapped the exhaust fans to get the restaurant operational temporarily. And that's why you see like it's just temporary, some electrical tape and stuff like that. So we got it operational. Well, today I have the new parts to fix it correctly. So we bought a power pack assembly, which essentially is all the components for the inside without the shell of the exhaust fan. So I have a power pack assembly right here. It comes with the motor, the wheel already assembled. Um, we're going to get started on changing that out. Now this is the first time I've ever changed a power pack assembly, but it didn't look too difficult. So we're gonna jump into it. All right, so if I didn't say it already, this is a captive air exhaust fan. Now, I've never done the power pack replacement and just, you know, to clarify here, this metal round shroud on the bottom is just for shipping to protect the wheel. The only part that's getting installed is the upper lip and then the wheel and all that good stuff. So we come over here and we look at this fan and it looks like I'm gonna have to disassemble the fan a little bit. Um, it's kind of greasy in there, which I'm not a super fan of, so we'll see. This might be the first and last time I do one of these power packs rather than just change the fan. The appeal was, I didn't want to have to bring a crane. I've done other exhaust fans, that you guys have seen a video of me changing that exhaust fan where we used a crane. And this was rather inexpensive comparative to an entire exhaust fan replacement and a crane and all that stuff. But we'll see once I go through all the install labor of changing this out. So from the looks of it, I'm gonna disconnect this electrical. We're gonna to have to get this uh, breather port right here off and then uh, get the cotter pin out. This assembly is probably gonna have to come off. Um, we're gonna have to pull these arms. They're gonna have to be loosened. Whether or not we can pull the whole thing as one assembly is what I'm thinking. Yeah, and that's where we're going. So it looks like I am gonna have to get in there to do some screws and things, which kind of sucks. I've already got grease on my arm, which I'm not super happy about. I think what I'm gonna do too is more than likely pick up this exhaust fan and set it on the ground. It had the original hinge brackets, which I actually just took off. So now it can safely sit on the ground without hurting anything. So I think I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna get this electrical disconnected first and get the cotter pins out and then we'll probably set it on the ground and start working from there. Again, I've never done one of these, but we're just slowly disassembling it. You're just kind of using, you know, mechanical common sense. So pulled the cotter pins without breaking them. Once I did that, this breather port pushes through. So then from the looks of it, now that is free and I should be able to pull this whole shroud up. Now this piece is not on the new one, so this is gonna have to bolt to it. I'm pretty sure that this whole assembly is gonna come out from the top. We've got the electrical disconnected. I'll change the conduit. More than likely, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to undo those guys. But you know, now that I look at it, it looks like maybe I could pull this whole top shroud with those those screws right there because this looks like it, it inserts into that. You know this? Interesting, huh? When you are doing stuff like this, you have to think of the worst case scenario. So I remember my technician talking to me about this and I gave him the idea to swap the fans. Okay, that worked. But look at what my technician did. He went above and beyond and he went ahead and strapped the fans down with some plumbing tape. Now I know that's simple, but what, what he was thinking here was what happens if the grease cleaning company came in the meantime and tried to hinge the fan without looking because it's not connected to the hinges. So by him doing that, he prevented ruining an entire exhaust fan and notice that he did them for both. So you always want to think about that kind of stuff because if it can happen, it will happen. That's the way I always think about things. Um, you know, best case scenario, it doesn't and you're a happy camper, but I always try to think if it can, it will, you know, and you try to prepare for the worst. All right, we got it on the ground and I had to remove these support brackets. So you got to do a 7 16 and a 3 8 nut and bolt right here. And then this is just a 3 8 tech screw. 
So when we pull that off, and yes, I am getting pretty greasy here, so I'm not a huge fan of this. My tools are gonna have to be totally degreased. So when you do that, then you got that off. So we're almost there, but it looks like there's another bolt down lower to get that whole top shroud off. So I've had this, this multi-tool for years. It's like a convertible rigid thing. You can buy different heads for it and the head can rotate. So I use it, this is a um, impact head. So this is gonna do really good because that's a Phillips head screw down in there and I don't wanna get my hands all nasty. And I can get in there and just brrr, you know, pull it right out. In fact, let's see, reverse, reverse. I don't think that there's a nut on the back side of this guy, so. Yeah, oh, there is a nut, dang it. I'm gonna have to get my hands under there, that sucks. Cause it's broken free, bummer. All right, I'm getting a little bit greasier than I want to already, but um, there's actually a screw right here on all four sides, and then once you do that, this whole shroud will come off, and then it'll be easier to get in there and work. So I'm gonna pop that off, and then I'll get the rest of it taken apart. Yeah, it's getting a bit silly. <laughs> what I gotta do to get this thing apart? I'm, I'm thinking it would have been easier just to pay for a crane. Try to save a buck, end up spending 20. But we're getting there, and I'm gonna flip this guy over, take those Phillips head screws out. I gotta get to a nut on the back side right there. And then uh, we should be able to pull the power pack assembly out. Hey guys, remind me not to do this again. Saving a buck is just covering me in grease. I'm getting pissed off. And see what I just did there? I like to wipe my nose, but I got grease right there. Freaking annoying. I got like a tiny little cut on my hand, but that can't be good with all that nasty ass grease. I've got that back together. I'm gonna put the nuts back on the bottom down here and then we'll drop this shroud on and hope that everything fits and works right. Yeah, that was kind of a pain in the butt. If it wasn't a grease fan, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but the fact that it's full of grease just is nasty. I gotta go get some more towels from the restaurant too. All right, I got the bottom ones lined up. Now I need to put these uh, L brackets or whatever you want, Z brackets, whatever in. Those are gonna be a pain and I'm gonna get greasy doing that, so. Okay, I got the electrical all wired in. Um, into here, into here. I went ahead and pre-wired the conduit. This is a 115 volt fan, which is another thing that's really silly, but. Um, installing the cover because we shouldn't have to get in here anymore. It's all wired up for ground. Yeah, so we're just gonna put this guy on, make sure we dial it in, and then we're gonna drag it over there. Now, that exhaust fan is running right now, so I'm gonna have to do a swap. I only want it down for the minimal amount of time, so that's why I pre-wired everything and got it all ready, because I only wanna turn it off, have it off for five, 10 minutes at the most, then turn it back on. Then I have plenty of time to, pre or to wire the prep hood, because I'm not worried about the prep hood. I got it running, um, did a quick swap on it. I have a feeling my conduit might be too short, but I'm gonna let it run for a few minutes and assemble the hinges, and then we'll hinge it and see if the conduit will work. It might work, it might not, but at least it's running now, and then we'll deal with that one. That guy right there was a heavy bad boy. This one was a lot lighter. I'd say this was 20, maybe 30 pounds lighter, eh, 20 pounds lighter, this one was ridiculous. But this is all aluminum, and that one has steel in it, so. Um, yeah, we're doing okay. So I'm gonna do a current test and then go from there. Uh, we are allowed to run 9.6 amps and we're under current, so that's a plus. 
So we'll get this taped up and uh, well actually we're not gonna tape that up till we hinge it to make sure everything's good. Given the choice, I do not like these hinges. They're just really crappy design. This hinge style right here, this is a super hinge by Omni Containment. They are by far the most superior exhaust fan hinge out there. Basically, once you put one on, you're really never gonna have to change it again. Um, but this is just a dumb design. They're not installed right. They're never gonna work right. Okay, now I got a giant mess and I gotta clean up all my tools because they got grease all over them. But we are fixed. I went ahead and redid the conduit for both of the exhaust fans. They're both running now, but I redirected them because they were going the wrong way. The conduits didn't need to be that long. This one right here, it's, it's set up better too. So everything is working. I need to put the lid on it, but they're operational. In a perfect world, I'd like them to get rid of that stupid hinge right there because it doesn't do anything. It doesn't even grab. Um, and I'd love to put on a super hinge from Omni, but we'll see. I'm gonna close this invoice out though. We can bring it up to them and deal with it at another time if they want. But yeah, that's it. Just gotta clean up my messes. I was uh, you know, trying to be as efficient as possible. So I originally brought conduit and electrical fittings and everything so i didn't have to go down to the truck a bunch of times you know that kind of stuff so always bring a bucket up so i have a place for all the trash and everything now but that's it we're gonna wrap it up so we live and we learn on some of these right um i thought you know hey i'd give it a shot changing that power pack on that unit um i will never do that again on a greasy exhaust fan it was just it was everywhere i i got home took a shower my tools still feel greasy to me um, you know, whatever, you know, I, I, I tried to help the customer out, you know, to try to save a couple bucks, but eh, no, not again. We're not going to do that again. So next time we'll just change the whole fan, um, and just get a crane out there. Cause that was just silly. You know, when it comes to lifting those fans on the roof too, you know, when I made the video where I showed me lifting that exhaust fan on the roof, I got a bunch of pushback from a lot of people and, and it doesn't bother me. It just kind of makes me laugh because people were criticizing me because I used an, a, a crane for an exhaust fan. Like, seriously, are you guys really, you know, when I'd made that video criticizing because someone chose to be smart and do less work and have a crane lift an exhaust fan onto a roof, you know, whatever. But it just makes me laugh, you know, like I just, I don't know. Sometimes I'm dumbfounded by some of that stuff, but, but anyways, I went off on a tangent and here we are talking about a totally different video. Um, in this one right here, uh, you know, I got to give props to my tech. I'm super happy that he did those little things like strapping that exhaust fan down with the plumber's tape. Like that's so important to remember to do that kind of stuff because you know, what happens if they had the grease cleaners come in and they, they, they come in usually at nighttime, the grease cleaners do, and they'll go to lift a fan and yeah, they should be checking and yeah, they should, you know, it's, it's their responsibility to make sure it's hinged right and all that stuff. But still, Okay, if it can, it will. That's the way I approach things. If it can happen, it will happen. So always assume that it's going to happen, okay? Assume the worst, and if it doesn't happen, hey, you're in a good place, you know, but you are prepared for the worst, right? So um, it was pretty much a straightforward replacement on this thing. It's just a matter of mechanically taking it apart, looking at how it goes together, using some mechanical common sense. I know that's like a voodoo word, and people might be triggered or offended by the word common sense, but I used mechanical common sense. I just looked at it and I said, look, these screws here, looks like I got to pull this apart and just slowly disassembled the exhaust fan. I didn't have any instructions. Nobody told me how to do it. I just kind of figured it out. Okay. And, uh, you know, I was able to get it together. I was able to put it back together without having any parts left over, which is always a plus on a side note. Again, I know I go off on tangents. I used to work at a body shop when I was a kid. And when I left that body shop, I still have a toolbox in my garage with two um, uh, antifreeze containers with the side of them cut out that we would use for like screws and bolts and stuff like that. I still have nuts and bolts and screws and all kinds of crap left over from when I worked at a body shop. My job was taking cars apart and putting them back together. <laughs> <laughs> so I have so much stuff and it's like, huh, I wonder what this bolt does. And huh, I wonder what this does. Cause there's so much on a car, but anyways, I'm going, going off on a tangent again. So I didn't have anything left over. So that was a good day on this exhaust fan. Okay. Um, you know, uh, it really wasn't too hard, but again, we have to remember to go in there, check current, make sure it's not over amping, you know, 
go through the normal steps, the proper procedures to make sure we get this thing running properly, making sure that it hinges, you know, making sure the conduit's not too tight. And, and it wasn't actually, I kind of thought that it was going to be too tight, but no, it, the conduit worked out perfect. I didn't have to change anything. All was good. Okay. I really appreciate you guys making it to the end of the video. Thank you so very much. If you haven't already, please go to my website, hvacrvideos.com. We got these hats available. We got shirts available. It really helps to support the channel and to keep me motivated to keep doing these, um, these videos. Okay. So I really, really appreciate you guys. Remember that I go live on Monday evenings, 5 PM Pacific on YouTube work permitting, obviously, if I can get off work in time. And then I also go live on the HVAC overtime YouTube channel. Okay. With my buddies where we hang out and kind of talk about the week and everything. So definitely come check that out. There's links to the overtime channel. There's links to the tools and all that good stuff that I use in the show notes of this video. Uh, any questions, please leave me a comment. Uh, also, you can send me an email to hvacrvideos at gmail.com. Okay. I really appreciate you and uh, we will catch you on the next one. Okay.